Emails from Afar, A Chef's Culinary Adventure Around the World by Mike Sanders Chapter 23, Glancing at God 1.25, Day 71 Right now we are in the town of Pondicherry, just south of Chennai. So far, India has been a wonderful place, filled with friendly people. In fact, they may be the nicest people we've come across yet. Case in point, Roger, our auto rickshaw driver, somehow knew that it's my birthday today as he wished me a happy day. Early this morning, as we were getting out at the bus station and saying our goodbyes, he stuck out his hand to shake mine. I reciprocated, and as I did, he slipped something into my hand. Being an old hat and one to play things cool, I smiled and just put it in my pocket and continued on with our goodbyes. Long story short, when I finally checked to see what in fact he did give me, it turned out to be a joint. Wow, I wasn't expecting that, at all. I didn't ask for it, I didn't talk about it with him, but there it was. I guess he really did want me to have a happy birthday. Anyway, Indians are genuine in their generosity and don't want anything in return. But I do have to say, I'm still a little apprehensive about India. It's truly an ocean of humanity. My God, the amount of people here. Imagine everyone in the United States was crammed east of the Mississippi River, and then make 7.3 clones of yourself and everyone else. That's how dense the population is here. It's kind of staggering. I could spend endless pages trying to describe what I have seen and experienced in just the short amount of time we've been here in Pondy, but I'll spare you. Let's just say we are very far from home. One of the highlights from the past 24 hours includes an old lady placing a garland of jasmine flowers around our necks. Unlike the lady in Chennai, she just stepped out of the crowd, did it, and then asked for money. Today is Republic Day, the Indian equivalent of the 4th of July. The streets are filled with people enjoying the holiday. We have a balcony view on the waterfront with a great view of the street below. It looks like any destination town, USA, on the 4th. There were flags and banners draped from every street light. People were going in and out of shops. Kids had ice cream cones that were half melted by the sun. Balloons and confetti were in the air, along with music and laughter. There were food vendors wandering through the crowds and families picnicking in the park. It really does feel like any town in the Midwest on the 4th of July. Except everyone's Indian and there are elephants roaming around with wild city cows that have their horns painted, and the streets are covered in trash. And some guy has a monkey on a leash that's wearing a gold dress and wearing way too much eyeliner. And the snake charmer on the corner, and the smell of curried cashews, and the lepers digging through piles of trash for dinner. To tell you the truth, it's unlike anything I've ever experienced. We're really enjoying India so far. We plan on being here in Pondi for a few days, and then we're off to a tiger preserve at the southwestern tip of the continent. Unfortunately, we have to go back to Chennai to catch the train to head south. So we'll make the best of it and go back to the new Victorian surprise Sairam. 127, Day 73 Last night I had, hands down, the worst nightmare I have ever had. Covered in sweat when I woke up, this time I was the one attacking someone. I was choking someone to death, my hands crushing their windpipe. When I woke up, I was strangling one of my pillows, both of my hands locked into death grip around it. No exaggeration. So that's it. Seeing as how my nightmares keep getting worse and worse, and the fact I could have been strangling Sarah instead of my pillow, I've decided to stop taking the malaria pills. I'd rather get malaria than choke Sarah to death during some psychotic episode. Sarah has decided to stop taking them as well. They're just too much. We will use lots of bug repellent. We've already found a great one called Otomos. It's a citronella-based non-toxic cream. Pleasant smelling and long-lasting. They say it does the job well. We'll see. We went an hour south of Chennai today where there is an ancient temple complex called Mahabalapuram. Pronounced Mahabalapuram. It was built by the same ancient civilization that eventually migrated to Cambodia and became the Khmer people. The beach temple is close to 3,000 years old and has withstood tsunamis, earthquakes, wars, and the test of time. 
Architectural similarities between the temples of Angkor and Mahabalapuram are quite prevalent in their structure and decoration. By chance, a busload of teenage girls was on a field trip at the temple for the day. It took about three seconds for them to spot the white people in Sarah's earrings. The entire herd of girls wanted to give Sarah a big hug. Why? I don't know. What I do know is that she must have spent 15 minutes hugging them all. Extending north and south of the temple is a perfect, picturesque beach. Once Sarah was done hugging it out with the schoolgirls, we took a long walk down its white sands. Lined all the way down the beach were small, brightly colored fishing canoes, their nets coiled next to them. Sadly, most of them were in a heavy state of disrepair, and didn't look like they would even float, much less be seaworthy. As we entered the beach, five or six cows were standing around eating out of a pile of smoking trash. It was quite shocking. I've never seen cows eating smoldering trash on the beach before. We held hands as we walked along the surf line, looking for shells, enjoying the scenery around us, all the while fending off ganja sellers, wild cows with painted horns, and young men selling cheap hotel or restaurant tickets called touts. As we wove our way through and around them, we had to avoid the condoms, coke bottles, plastic bags, newsprint, and one dead puppy rolling in the surf. Situated back on the beach at the bottom of the major hotel, Cafe Mahika offered us an unexpected oasis from the shocking sights in the pushy pot cellars on the sand. Fringed by giant coconut palms that swayed in the late afternoon breeze, the cafe had only five properly well-set tables. The whole area had been screened off with large woven grass mats strung between the trees. The kitchen consisted of little more than a wok, a burner, and a small cart. All of the ingredients were right there in front of you in little bowls. I had a fried rice dish. Bursting with heat and chock full of small shrimp and pineapple bits, it was bloody fantastic. The rice had been cooked with coconut milk and a large amount of turmeric, giving the dish a heady fragrance and a deep yellow color. With a fresh lime made for a drink, it was a perfect meal for a beach. Sarah had the madras curried lamb with naan or flatbread. Its rich, full flavor was magic in the mouth. Deep and complex in taste, it filled the body with complete satisfaction. Once again, Sarah ordered something I would have never have gotten, and she did much better than me. How does she keep doing that? We watched the black thunder clouds and their electric fireworks out at sea roll across the horizon as we sucked down a few kingfisher beers. We chatted with the chef about our food and travel. He let me take down the recipe for Sarah's lunch. I will always cherish the memory of lunch at that cafe beach.